What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, Andrew and I are talking about apparel. Because as martial artists, sometimes we wear things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that are not geese and no box and, and, and training I'm not wearing, garb. I'm not wearing any of those things right now. I'm, I'm not either, but there's some overlap there. If you're new to the show, I'm Jeremy Lesniak, joined by Andrew Adams. And here at Whistlekick, everything we do is in support of the traditional martial arts. If you are a traditional martial artist, we probably do a bunch of things that you would appreciate. Maybe all you're aware of is this show, but please visit whistlekick.com and check out things like the apparel that we make, like the training equipment we make, training programs. Uh, what else do we have over there? Events. Oh, yeah. We, we do some events. <laughs> Anyway, we have some great events, and you should check out all the stuff that we're doing at whistlekick.com. Sign up for the newsletter so you can get notified. But if you want to go deeper on this episode, you want to go into one of the other episodes, because we've got a lot of them. We're right around 900 when we were recording this. Uh, As recording this, we are just before 900. This will be just before our 900th 900th episode. We are in This will be episode 905. Oh, it will? This will. Wow. Cool. Okay. Episode 905. So you've got 904 other episodes that you can check out all for free. If you've jumped in new, you know, go back, check it out. See what else we've got that might interest you. And with that, oh, should let you know, this episode is sponsored by Kataro. Kataro does some awesome stuff. We're going to talk about this sweatshirt in a little bit. I'm, I'm wearing this. Actually, I'll show you this arm. This is this crazy. So cozy. Kataro, K-A-T-A-A-R-O. People know Kataro as belts, but yeah, we'll, we'll dig into that as it pops up organically, but shout out and thank you to Kataro for your sponsorship. So apparel. Apparel, yes. You know, if you go back a few years, back to the stretch of time where I was pitching Whistlekick for investment, mm-hmm. where I was doing everything I could to get investment, which... Uh, Spoiler alert, did not work at the big corporate level yet, but did get a bunch of people that believed in what we were doing and and helped keep things moving forward. But one of the things I used to say on stage was, you know, as a kid, and I bet you had something, a similar experience. As a kid, I would look around and see my friends that played basketball and they had no shortage of things that they could wear yep. that told the world, I love basketball. Yep. Whether it was th- their team from across the country or wherever. It could be a team yep. or a jersey yep. or, yep. you know, how, how many people wore, um, we're, we're of close enough age, remember starter jackets? Starter jackets. Oh, yeah. Right. Um, or or their, they, their school team. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. All, all the way up, all the way down. <laughs> But what I had as a kid was a Bruce Lee t-shirt that my mother bought at Walmart. Because mm-hmm. that's what we had. Yep. Because other than that, it was maybe the school that you trained at did t-shirts once in a while. Mm-hmm. That was it. That's all we had. Yep. And that was a big part of starting Whistlekick. Now, we're not going to turn this into a commercial episode for Whistlekick and all that. But it's important to note that this is a big part of what we do and why we do it. Because mm-hmm. I've got this dream, and it's happened a couple times. Where two people out in the world that are familiar with whistle kick see each other wearing whistle kick and go, <gasps> I had somebody come up to me in a bed, bath, and beyond and say, Is that that whistle kick company? Oh, that's cool. Because he, he cool. didn't, he used to train and he knew someone that, that mm-hmm. did train and that person had whistle kick stuff. And so we had a kind of a fun conversation. But my, my dream is two people meet in an airport. That would be cool. And they go and they train in the corner while they're waiting for their plane. Yeah, that'd be pretty fun. That's what I want to happen. So when I was a high school, like, what, did I just say when I was a high school? I don't think you were personally a high school, but I bet I you were in high I school. I was. When I was a student in high school, um, I was training, mm. and my favorite t- and the school that I trained at, I don't think we had t-shirts. Mm. I don't think they had school shirts. But I found somewhere, store, whatever, a, a white t-shirt with just a huge tiger face on the front. And it had some... Some I can't even say if it was Japanese kanji because I don't know, but it had some Asian looking characters at yeah. the bottom, whether it was Korean or Japanese or okay, I don't know. But it was like that's cool because I trained martial arts. There's Japanese what I I thought it was Japanese. Right. I don't know if it really was in hindsight. 
But it's like, and it was my favorite T-shirt. I would wear that whenever I could, when it, you know, because it connected you with something you were really correct. passionate about. It absolutely, and you know, it's a cool tiger face. It was like, oh, it's so cool. How um, close was it to the Averadote tiger? Uh, it, you know, I shout out to Master Ken. I don't. I would have to. It, I, I didn't mean to derail of, your story. No, no, no. It's all good. Now I'm now I'm trying to think. I don't. It wasn't. It was a m- little more realistic of okay. looking of a tiger. Okay. Um. But like that was what I had yeah. because it was the only thing that really connected me, like you said, to what I do. Yeah. And as time has gone on, you know, we, we've entered this time of print on demand and it's a lot easier to get stuff made. And I, I don't think I know a martial arts school that doesn't do shirts and, and sometimes sweatshirts and all, and all these other things. But what it really comes down to is if you look at your wardrobe, it tells the world something about you. It tells the world what is important to you. I know you've got a ton of t-shirts. How many are you up to? I have over, I'm going to, be conservative and say I have over 80 t-shirts. Okay. That's a lot of t-shirts. I have more than a full drawer in my dresser of just t-shirts. That's a lot. And, and they're all they're all fun. Yeah. But they tell the world things about you, right? They they have I have three kinds of t-shirts. Okay. I've got martial art t-shirts, sure. whether they're shirts from other schools that they've given me as gifts or whistle kick or you know, other martial arts type shirts yep. that people have gotten me. Um I've got bagpipe or drumming mm. related shirts another big part of your life yep yep whether it's i went to a seminar that you got a shirt mm. from i have a lot of those um or world pipe band championship shirts things like that or i've got just funny shirts um dad jokes if you know andrew yeah. he he loves his puns and his dad jokes that's basically all of my t-shirts that's it like but that's those are three huge parts of you if mm-hmm. we were to find some way to pull dna not literally from the shirts but to concoct a person out of martial arts, bagpipe, drumming, and bad dad jokes. jokes. Yeah. For example, then, then we'd get eighty-five percent of you. Yeah. I mean, uh, why does the queen not wave with this hand? Because that's my hand. <laughs> See, if you ever get the chance to spend time with this man, um, if you don't like that style of humor, uh, you will. Yep. Please. I'm going to give you one more just because okay. it ties into that joke, please. Where does the king keep it, keep his armies? In his sleeveies. <laughs> I knew it was going somewhere. <laughs> I just couldn't quite find it. Okay, sorry. So, but those are the kinds of shirts yeah. that I wear: martial arts, band, pipe band, bagpipe band related, or jokes like funny looking fun shirts. Yeah. Now, I bet all of you out there have favorite clothing. Uh, in 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 a, in a little bit, we'll talk about functional clothing, right? You know, kind of stretchier jeans as, as mm-hmm. fabrics have changed. I definitely want to get into the kind of the technical or the the, the functional side of, of mm-hmm. apparel because we're not just talking about graphics on a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. But before we do that, let's talk about, I lost my train of thought. Crap, where did it go? It's over there. Is it? You might have to cut this part. We're talking about what we're wearing Mm -hmm. and, oh, this is an important part. One of the things that I think is important to talk about is there's this uh, dilemma. It could almost be a a two schools of thought, but it's not a big enough subject. Do you tell the world that you train? Mm. Yep. Yep. Do I put karate and martial arts on everything. Now that, if you take a look at Whistle Kick Apparel, you will see that we have stuff that says martial arts and stuff that does not. Mm-hmm. And that is intentional. And I would say that most of the stuff does not say martial arts. Um, and a lot of the ones that do would be the, like the free training day shirts. Yep. But most of it doesn't. Yep. Uh, and, and as an aside to those of you out there building a brand, that's because if if you have to tell the world too much what you do, it's... Nike doesn't say, hey, we make shoes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I think that's an important thing to consider. And, and I've encouraged some of the schools that I work with, hey, make two versions of your shirts. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got a logo. It's got the word Taekwondo or martial arts in the logo. Make a version where you pull that out. Mm-hmm. 
right? Let people fly the flag of the thing that they do in a way that they want to. In the way they want to. And yeah. it doesn't necessarily invite challenges. Yep. Right? I am very careful about what I wear where when I you go places. Where you wear it. Yeah. Yep. I, I am... I am unlikely, I mean, around here in central Vermont, it's not a big deal, but if, you know, we're talking about some, some upcoming plans mm -hmm. this coming weekend where we're going to do some recording, we're headed into Boston. Now, Boston is not anywhere close to the most violent city on the planet, but there are more people just as a, a percentage of exposure, we're more likely to run into problems because there are more people, mm -hmm. more rolls of the dice. I am probably not, go I'm just flat out not going to wear something that says, I do martial arts. Yeah. Yeah. When we go in this weekend. Yeah. The t-shirts that we wore at Rhode Island Comic Con. Are you a martial artist? Say hi. We're not going to wear those shirts. No, we're not. Yeah, for sure. We figured a big group of nerds was probably pretty safe. Yeah. And it was. <laughs> that was a fun group of people. All right. So it for me, those two things come back to flying your flag. Mm -hmm. What is it you're proud of? What is it that you like? What is it that you want to tell the world about yourself? And I think that that's a really important thing to be able to do. If you're a school and you don't produce some apparel, some fun apparel, periodically, then you're, you're missing out. You're, you're missing out. And, yeah. and forget about the profit on the shirts. If my students wear a shirt out in the world, it might be some advertising. Absolutely. If I can cover my costs, maybe I round up a couple bucks and they buy some shirts from me. Cool. Yeah. I, I I think if you are a school and not doing apparel in some way, even if it's, even if it is just a t-shirt, yeah. uh, I think you're hugely missing out. I really, really do. Because even again, even if you are a school that does not look to make money and we both know there are schools out there that don't charge, like that's fine. You don't have to, I'm not saying buy the sh get the shirt made for eight dollars and sell it to your students for 50 right buy the shirt for eight dollars and sell it to them for eight dollars i don't care take pre-orders but but having your students be excited about showing off what they do is nothing but good it helps connect let's remember most of us train two to three hours a week that is the average training mm -hmm. time yep but we are wearing non-martial arts related clothing a lot more than that. Yeah. If somebody wears a t-shirt one day, they're doubling to tripling to quadrupling the amount of time that they're wearing their t-shirt versus their martial arts training attire. And to give someone something that helps them connect their experience in their training, their experience as a martial artist with the rest of their life, I think is really valuable. Mm -hmm. So please keep that in mind. Yeah. So that takes us to like the the stuff for school owners, um, aver you know, helping advertise, which in a lot of ways is going to advertise, hey, look, I'm a martial artist. I go to this martial arts school. Yeah. But one of the things I love about uh, not, not all of my martial arts stuff is whistle kick re related, but like as an example, this hoodie, this Kathy Long Dragon hoodie is – Anybody on the street can see it, doesn't know I do martial arts, yeah. but the number of people that I've had comment on, wow, that's a really cool hoodie. They're not martial artists. They just think it looks really cool. It's got a cool design on it or yeah. whatever um, because something can be aesthetic and look good to non-martial artists because it's enjoyable to look at, yeah. you know? Um, so, you know, this hoodie, I think the hoodie you're wearing as well. Like there's yeah. a lot yeah, it's to probably be a said good time to, to mention this. I really like this hoodie, you know, and it's, it's kind of an unconventional design that there's nothing on the front, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's a zip up and one that's, you know, I don't, I don't know what the design process was mm -hmm. at Katara, why they, they chose to leave something off the front, but I've done plenty of zip ups mm -hmm. and I, I don't think we have any in the store right now, but often when I do zip ups, I leave the front blank because you end up, you can't print over the zipper it doesn't it yep. just doesn't work so you end up with something small or whatever and just aesthetically it doesn't look right but we've got something on the right sleeve here and it's it says it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war and it's got japanese kanji for that and you're gonna have to help me here orient me to the camera okay 
for yeah, the pack. Yeah, no, that's good. I'm just going to lift up the hood there. Yep. And on the back is this great tree, and it's, it's a great bonsai. All of the leaves mm -hmm. are the Japanese kanji for the word weaver, which is what Kataro means. Yeah. So they really you, you can't see that on the okay. screen. You can't see the individual characters, but just know that it but is. But it's it's an awesome hoodie. I'm proud to wear it. Um, and and you know, just remember, as an organization at Whistlekick, here we're not. Just do our stuff. Just buy our stuff. Check out what Kataro has, because they have more than this for apparel. Oh, yes. Absolutely. They've got some really cool stuff. You can use the code WK10, capital W, capital K, number one, number zero, to save 10% over there on your first order. And if you are a school owner, they've got some great discounts. So make sure you set up a wholesale account with mm -hmm. them. Reach out. Tell them yeah. tell them we sent you. And you know, make sure... Make sure you're supporting the cool companies that are making cool stuff for martial artists. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I also like the fact that the front is blank um, because it it's not in your face. Yes. You know, it, it's a cool thing. This hoodie is very much in your face. Absolutely. That's and part of why people like it. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, I'm more this sort of aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Even though we make these sorts of things uh, because this is what people want. I am... To a certain degree, not our target demographic when yep. it comes to apparel. Yeah, yeah. But and the other thing that I like about the Kataro hoodie is the the back bonsai. Yeah. I don't know that it was designed to look like it, and in fact, when I think about it, it's a knot. But it's very similar to the Miyagi Do bonsai, oh, just yeah. the shape of it, which is kind of cool. That's I, I, and I so I really really That's dig fine. that. And it's got pockets, so I can sit here with my pockets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Kataro. Appreciate your support. Let's talk about this last category, this last subtopic sure. of apparel, and that's functional apparel. Mm -hmm. How many of you put on jeans in the dressing room and you squat and you kick and you make sure that you can move in them? This is not an uncommon thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And prior to stretch getting put into denim, Yep. That was a big deal for a lot of us. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when I was a kid, it, it meant I was wearing bigger, baggier jeans. Or you shelled out tons of money and bought the Chuck Norris jeans. Kicking jeans. The kicking jeans. Yeah. Yeah. Th those are cool. Um, I've got a pair of the current iteration okay. of those jeans. And they're nice. They're fine. But they don't look great. And that was always the problem with the kicking mm. jeans is they didn't, they never fit me well. Yeah. I could, I never had a pair, but you know, you've got these here, which I don't know if you saw a little, little bit, a little bit of stretch. Bit of stretch. Yep. And, uh, these do not actually, they, they might have a little bit. These are a pair of, uh, these are probably the cheapest jeans I own. Most of my jeans have some stretch to mm -hmm. them, but I'm not going to wear these most places. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, because they're black and they're going to, Get really <laughs> dirty really quickly. But most of my denim has some stretch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't wear button-ups that restrict my movement, right? You ever get a, a, a button-down shirt that, you know, really bunches up under under the Absolutely. arm? And you're, and you're like, I can't. I feel like I'm restricted here. Maybe you're at a formal event and you can, you know, it's good for keeping your arms by your sides and that's about it. I have over the years shelled out a ton of money. Mm -hmm. for custom shirts for those sorts of circumstances. Yeah. I, I used to have to wear a shirt and tie every day. Mm. And I would, like you mentioned with jeans, I would go, when I went to a store to put up, to try out shirts, like I would put it up and I would, I would do this. Yeah. You know, like, how does this feel? You know, Wait, for those listening, you just have to hear my arm movements. <laughs> Can I defend myself while wearing this clothing? Yeah, absolutely. And this is where, you know, I, I don't think we'll, we'll quite, Go in, we're not going to go into shoes, but we can at least acknowledge this is a, a difficult subject when it comes to footwear because mm -hmm. aesthetic footwear, especially high heels, it's it's a whole it's a whole other stuff, yeah, whole other subject that we're not going to get into. But keep it in mind. No, absolutely, um, absolutely. And then even going so far as to like, okay, I need to wear a tie where I'm going, but. Do I want to make sure that I'm wearing my clip-on tie? I, I was, wasn't was sure if you were going to go there. I know people who refuse to wear full ties mm -hmm. for that reason. Yep. The I'm... idea that this is a thing around my neck 
and it is knotted around my neck and it gives someone a very good handhold. Yep, absolutely. If I had to wear a tie in a uh, an environment where I was a little less confident, mm -hmm. I would probably opt for a clip-on tie mm -hmm. or... Or a zipper tie. Those are cool too. You grab it, it's a zipper. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah. I haven't seen it. It would still be a loop around your neck, sure. but if somebody grabbed it and they pulled, it would just pull the zipper down. Oh, okay. So it would then be a loop that's like this long as opposed to around your neck. That is, that is better. Those are pretty cool. Because then you still have the, t the tab in the yeah. back. So it looks, as opposed to a clip-on tie, which doesn't always have that extra tab. For sure. Anyway. <laughs> so now we're going to turn it to you. What is your relationship with your clothing mm -hmm. as it relates to martial arts? Do you try things on in the dressing room? Are you very insistent on certain fabrics or styles of clothing for your own safety? Do you tell the world, hey, you know, I'm a martial artist. I wear martial arts shirts and, and things all over the place. Or are you a little more conservative with it? Do you consider what style of neckwear you're going to put on at a wedding? Yeah. You know, these, these are all important and very personal decisions. And I hope that you are considering them, if nothing else. And as an aside, if this is a subject that you think about, especially the functional side of our day-to-day -day clothing, it's not a bad idea for you to do some training in, in that clothing. That clothing. Yep. Yeah, we've talked about that before, mm -hmm. but just another reminder there. Anything else for wine? No, I think that's pretty yeah. good. Again, shout out to Kataro. Make sure you go to Kataro.com. Remember that double A in the middle, K-A-T-A-A-R-O.com. Use the code WK10, that's capital letters, to save yourself 10% on your first order. School owners, set up a wholesale, wholesale account. It's not sure. going to cost you anything. You can see the better pricing. They're, the pricing they have is already wonderful for the quality of what they deliver. Kataro is not a bottom-end company. They make no great, great stuff. Mm -hmm. If you want to check out what we do, start at whistlekick.com. You can use the code podcast15. I had to think for a moment what it was. I don't know why. Because you didn't want to give the, the Katara one. That's right. I didn't, I didn't want to distract from it. We do completely different things. Mm -hmm. They do. But check out this hoodie. This is an awesome hoodie. You're not going to find anything like this at whistlekick.com. And whistlekickmartialartsradio.com is the place to go for everything related to this show. We good? Yeah, I think so. If you got feedback, questions, comments, best place to leave them is in the Facebook group, Martial Arts Radio. But you can also email us, Andrew at Jeremy at Whistlekick.com. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, and have a great, great day. day.